guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a complete care guide how you set up a Dubai Roach colony. So let's not waste any time and let's get straight into the video. All right guys, so this is my Dubai Roach colony that I have been using now for maybe two, three years. It's kind of small and when I'm gonna put the egg boxes in here, the egg boxes are too tall. So that means I have to cut the egg boxes and try to fit them in here the best way possible. But that also takes away a lot of the space where the roaches can roam around in. I have one Dubai roach colony that I, like never touch. I just let them breed and try to get more of them. And then I have another one, another Dubai roach colony where I basically feed off to my spiders or lizards or whatever. So the thing with these enclosures is that these are not the ultimate uh, enclosures for Dubai roaches. They're not ultimate when it comes to putting egg boxes in there. So what I did was that I got a bigger box to put all the Dubai roaches in where the egg box that will fit without me having to cut them up. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. So I'm gonna put these boxes right here and I'm gonna show you the new bin. All right, so this is the new bin. As you can see, it's almost as tall as those two together. You can also see that it's bigger, it's wider. So it will fit more dewbear roaches. But the thing with dewbear roaches is that they wanna live crammed together. If you put them in a box that is too big, they're not gonna thrive as much as if, if you would put them in something really close together. So that's why I'm gonna put both of these into this one. So before we put the roaches in here, I'm gonna have to put some ventilation on the top. And the way I'm doing the ventilation holes is basically I use mosquito net, which I found here, which are really thin. And I'm gonna cut up a hole in the middle and I'm just gonna glue this to the whole top. And I don't really have anything good that cut plastic. So I'm gonna use uh, this knife, like a heat knife, I don't know what they're called. I use it to cut styrofoam, which is plastic. So I figured, well, I know that's gonna work on this as well, but it's not the best option, but it works. And after I cut the hole out, I'm gonna put on the mosquito net with some hot glue and then it's all ready. So let's roll the time lapse and I will see you guys soon. Alright, so the lid is cut out. I highly recommend you to use a fan if you're gonna use something like this because it becomes very smoky in here. Is that what you say? Yeah, it doesn't smell good. So use a fan. But as you can see, the lid is cut out. We have a big ventilation hole right here. And now we wanna put on the mesh or the mosquito net on top of here. And like I said, or like I mentioned, we're gonna use one of these hot glue guns. One thing I forgot to mention earlier was the color of the bin. With dubia roaches, it is kind of important. They like it dark. So if you have something that is transparent, they might not thrive as much as they would in something that's all black. Even this green is pushing it. It's almost too light. So I think they're gonna really like being in here because it's gonna be all black. But enough said about that. I can see that the hot glue gun is getting warm. So we're about to start the next step. So I'm gonna grab the mesh. I'm gonna remove this. And I think I should make this into a time lapse because you know what I'm gonna do. So just watch it and I'm gonna make it a time lapse. So I'll see you guys soon. Alright, 
So you can see the glue is on, the mesh is on, but now we're gonna put this aside so this can dry. And now we're gonna get the egg boxes. And before we put the egg boxes in, we're gonna talk a little bit about substrate because you can use substrate for your UV roaches. I have heard that the substrate takes away a lot of the smell of the colony. I personally don't think dubia roaches smell that bad if you clean it on a regular basis. And if you clean it on a regular basis, it will be hard to clean if you have substrate in here. So I like to do my bins all clear of substrate and just put the egg boxes in here. And I'm gonna show you how I like to stack them. And you can see they fit perfectly in here. And I'll put these one right, right here. And then I'm just gonna go all the way to a certain point where I'm gonna put this little food tray right here. And I should put it right there so I know how far I can go. The thing is with Dubai Roaches, since they really like it crammed, you can actually put the cardboard boxes like this because they love to get in here. And I'll put another one like this. And one like, wait, was this way, right? Yep. And then what I like to do is that I like to cut out a piece, like half of it, like this. Because then you can actually stack it like this on the side. I don't know how good the video is picking this up, but you can see like this. Because then when it's time to feeding, you can just take this one out and you don't disturb all the rest of the colony. You take the roaches you need and then you're good to go. So this is how simple it is to set up a dubia roach colony. What you can do is that you can actually put in water crystals in here, but I prefer not to use water crystals because in my opinion, it just becomes very dirty with water crystals. And I think it's a better idea to just apply greens basically every day or every other day, depending how much they eat. I don't really bother adding a water source and I have bred my dubia roaches now for almost three years. So you really don't need it. But one thing you do need is external heat. And I have used a heat mat under the bin. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I put my heat mat on the shelf and then I put the bin on top of the heat mat. So the heat mat is basically under and it's gonna be under the side away from the food. I heard people being successful breeding dubai roaches without any external heat. But I know from experience that the colony I had that was on a heat mat they bred so much quicker than the colony I had that wasn't on a heat mat. So yeah, it, it will work either way. I'm gonna put this bin in a closet where there's no extra heat, but it's pretty warm in this room, so I think it should be fine. But if I can see that they're not breeding at the pace that I need them to breed because I need to feed my animals, I will add an external heat, probably just under this in some way. But for now, I'm gonna do it without heat. And now that this is all set up, I'm gonna show you how I clean up my other roaches. And after that, I'm gonna put all the roaches in here. So I'll see you guys soon. So what I do when I clean out my roaches is basically I have a clean bin like this. And then I prepare this bin with the same setup as in this bin. And I just basically just move the roaches over and then I clean this other bin out. But today I'm not gonna set this up because I'm gonna remove all the roaches from here into this one. And then I'm just gonna pour them over to their new home. Before I do this, I really wanna put on some gloves because I think roaches are disgusting. And as you can see, I have a little protective bin right here. So if they will be able to get out, they will stay in here and I can just pick them up from there. So safety first, be right back. I'm gonna put on some gloves. And now I'm gonna try to transfer the roach into here. So what I do is just take one of these. I just bang it in like here. You can see you get a little bit of dirt in here and that's fine. So when I get these out, you have to make sure because they can be really small ones. You know what? Let me just make this into timeless because it's gonna take forever. But I'll see you guys soon. So one thing you can do when you can't get all the roaches over, you can just put this in here. You just wait for a little while. The roaches are gonna climb onto this wing again. And then you just take it out 
I got some on it. And you just you get these out like this, and then you put it down again. And you keep doing like that, and eventually you will get all the roaches into this bit. I'm gonna let this one sit like this for a while, and I'm gonna get the other bin and get those roaches in there as well. Alright guys, so I think I got all the roaches out. I know there are some small left, but I couldn't get them out because they're buried down into the substrate or dirt, whatever you call it. So what I did was that I left the egg box in there, I put the lid on and I put them in a dark closet and that will hopefully get them out of the substrate and onto the egg box. But for now, we're just gonna move on and we're gonna pour in all of these guys into their new home. Alright guys, so now the new setup is complete. It was very simple and it is very simple. Now you just have to clean it every two weeks, every month. It all depends how big the colony is. So it's hard for me to see how fast these guys will make a mess in here. But if you look at the old enclosures, that is too far. That's when it starts to smell and you don't want to get that far. So you want to keep an eye on the bottom. You can see how much dirt there in there and then you know when you're gonna clean it. But for now, I'm gonna feed these guys every day, every other day, depending on how much to eat and how quick to eat. Same as the bread runners, you wanna feed these guys as much they can finish within 24 hours. If they can't finish it, you take it out. But your goal is eventually to find how much you're actually gonna put in there because you will eventually learn how much they finish in 24 hours. So the last thing you wanna put in is some dry food. This is some dry food I got from an online store. It's basically, food for chickens. You can also use dog food, cat food, any dry food. And I'm just gonna pour it in right next to the food bowl. And if you have it in one place like this, you also know when you're gonna refill it again. And that is how I set up my Dubia Roach colony. All right guys, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you find it interesting. And I'm really sorry about the bad focus in the video. I don't know what was happening, but I think it's some type of setting I accidentally hit and then it was just bad. So I'm really sorry. I hope the video was still okay to watch, but that's gonna do it for this video. If you find it interesting or if you have any comments, comment them down below and I will see you in the next video.